Hi everyone, it's the Math Sorcerer here with Chegg. In this video, we're going to discuss vectors. Let's do some examples. So we have the vector A with components 2 and 3, and the vector B with components negative 4 and also 6. Part A wants us to compute the vector 2A plus B. Let's work through this very carefully. So we'll start by writing down 2A plus B. So we have 2 times the vector A, plus the vector b. This is equal to 2, and the vector a is 2 comma 3, so let's go ahead and write that. So we have 2 comma 3, and then plus vector b, which is negative 4 comma 6. Negative 4 comma 6. All we've done so far is just write down the problem again and replace a with what it actually is, which is 2 comma 3 and b with negative 4 comma 6. Now what we can do is we can do something with this 2. So whenever you have a number outside of a vector like this and you're multiplying it by the vector, you actually just multiply the number by each of the components. It's really easy. So 2 times 2 is 4, and 2 times 3 is 6. If you're curious, this is actually called scalar multiplication because the number 2 is called a scalar. Plus, and then we have negative 4 comma 6. And then now to add the vectors, all you do is you add the components. So in this case, the first component is 4, and in the second vector, the first component is negative 4, so it'll just be 4 plus negative 4, comma, and then 6 plus 6. This is a step that I normally skip. Basically, you could just write 0 and 12. You can just add them up and you know skip some steps. So this would be 0, 12. And that would be the vector that is equal to 2a plus b. So recap, you just take any numbers that are outside the vectors and multiply them through. And then to add the vectors, you just add the components. So for example, here we had the vector 4, 6. So we added 4 plus negative 4, and then we added 6 plus 6. Let's go ahead and do another example. Part B, compute the magnitude of A. That's what the bars mean. They mean magnitude. This is a side note. Some books use a double bar for magnitude. So if you see that, it means the same thing. Let's go ahead and work this one out. Solution. Let me just give you the formula really quickly. So if you have a vector V and it's equal to, say, V sub 1, comma, V sub 2, the magnitude of V is basically the square root of the component squared. So you take v1, square it, you add, you take v sub 2, and you square it. Basically the length of the vector. So in our particular case, we have the magnitude of a, which is equal to the magnitude of the vector with components 2 and 3. So in our particular case, we can think of v1 is 2 and v sub 2 is 3. And again, basically, you're just squaring the components and adding. So you take the 2 and you square it. You put a plus sign, and then you take the 3 and you square it. So we have that the magnitude of A is equal to, well, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 4 plus 9 is 13. So it's equal to the square root of 13. The magnitude of the vector is also called the norm, and it's also called the length. So multiple names for the same thing. Let's do an example that is a little bit more challenging. This example is very important because it comes up a lot in other problems. The question is to find a unit vector in the direction of, and then we have the vector a equal to 3i hat minus 7j hat plus k hat. So a unit vector is a vector whose magnitude is 1. So it's a vector that has length one. And that makes certain formulas really easy. So it comes up a lot in calculus. Solution. First thing we're going to do in this problem is write this vector in component form because it makes it much easier to deal with. So the vector a is equal to, so in component form, you basically look at the number in front of the i hat. So there's a three here, so we put a three as the first component. There's a negative 7 in front of the j hat, so you put a negative 7. And then there's a 1, there's an invisible 1 in front of the k hat, so you put a 1. This is called the component form of the vector. 
And by the way, this is a vector in three dimensional space, right? Because we have three components. All right, so to find a unit vector in the direction of a vector, basically all you do is you take your vector and you divide by its magnitude. So the magnitude of A, so this time we have three components, but the formula is very, very similar. Basically you square each component and you add them. So you would get three squared plus negative seven squared plus one squared. This ends up being uh, nine plus 49 plus one. So you end up with the magnitude of A equal to the square root of 59. And so now to find the unit vector in the direction of A, all we do is we divide A by the square root of 59. So I'm gonna go ahead and write it like this. I'm gonna call it U for unit vector. It's equal to A over the magnitude of A. Totally worth memorizing this formula. So you take your vector and you divide by its magnitude. This is equal to, so our vector was three, negative seven comma one, and then it's being divided by the square root of 59. It's really being multiplied by one over the square root of 59 as well. So basically you're just dividing each component by the square root of 59. We get three over the square root of 59, negative seven over the square root of 59, and the last component is one over the square root of 59. And this would be a unit vector in the direction of A. Super useful, super important. Also, I should mention that this process of taking a vector and turning it into a unit vector is called normalizing. So we've essentially normalized this vector. We had a vector which had a length of the square root of 59, and then we turned it into a vector of length one, which is this white vector here, which I've pictured. That's the idea. Really cool problem. I hope you've learned a lot of math in this video. And if you've enjoyed this video, make sure to check out Chegg for more videos. Good luck and take care.